Gamera is a giant kaiju turtle who could breathe fire and fly by spinning in the sky. But what would Gamera really look like if it was real? Could it actually absorb heat for power? And could a giant turtle really fly? A giant turtle is not so far-fetched because there's been some humongous reptilian tanks in the prehistoric past. One of the biggest on land is the Megalochylus, which was bigger than the average cow, but the largest ever was the Archelon that swam the oceans more than 74 million years ago. Flight might take more than just slapping a few rockets on the biggest turtle, though. To help me explore the speculative evolution of super turtles, I went to the expert. Ali is the creator of Kappa, a spec evo turtle world that feels like a mix of Wayne Barlow's Alien Planet documentary mixed with Dylan Bajda's Serena Project. Ali, the creator of Kappa and the amazing, beautiful mind that is, I would say, the master of spec evo turtles ultimately i want to yeah tell tell stories and i i guess like hit like emotional moments you know I, I want the first time you see like a big predator or a giant herbal to be like a wow what is that kind of thing i think you've kind of perfected that with focusing on the alien world you you it's i don't think i see that a lot in spec evo artists i agree i think that's something that's missing from a lot of speculative evolution stuff they kind of present everything as like a broad overview i was really interested in what ollie thought of gamera so there is an argument that if you set things like you know 900 million years in the future then sure anything literally anything can happen i think at that <laughs> catastrophically long time scale if there was any kaiju ever we basically had those as dinosaurs dinosaurs were essentially as big as anyone any animal can get, except for blue whales, which is kind of cool that we have the largest animal now. Dinosaurs in particular seem to get more and more interesting every single year. Sauropods, for example, are basically like air hulks. They're just full of, they're like a hot air balloon walking around. Like every, almost every tissue in their body and every bone is intruded in some way with like an air sac. So it makes them much lighter than they really should be for an animal that's 35 meters long. And it's perhaps part of the reason they got so large. My little pet theory is that they were definitely like, we have no, I don't think we found the biggest sauropods. My, my little pet theory is that they were like, there were, there were definitely 120 ton plus sauropods. That's my little, I didn't have a feeling just in my gut <laughs> that some of these animals were just preposterously huge. The average male African elephant is like know, six or seven tons, but there are some individuals that are like 10. So, I mean, some that, you know, that just a random individual can be 70% larger than the average. Uh, and you see that with humans as well, right? Like, every now and again, there is a man who weighs 200 kilograms. Uh, I weigh like 70, so that's literally more than double my body weight. There was a paper out recently, which came out while I was doing Kappa and kind of, it was like, oh no, it's going to crush my dreams. But basically the paper was saying that Archelon probably represents the size limit for turtles. Because, basically, females need to crawl up onto land to lay eggs. And if they got any bigger, they would overheat and die. So I was like, oh no, <laughs> my giant turtles, they're all gone. <laughs> the turtles. Where are the Summer turtles? Sausage. Where are the turtles? Come on, guys, get out of here. Where are the turtles? The closest thing we might get to a biped turtle is if turtles grew long arms for tearing at tall trees instead of growing long necks. It would have the same body plan and feeding behavior of massive calicotheres and ground sloths. This body plan looks a lot like the terrible Mordrum of Kappa from Ollie's World. Is there any hypothetical scenario where turtles might hypothetically evolve flight? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, give it enough time, sure, why not? Turtles have some things about their anatomy that make evolving flight really difficult. Um, mainly that the arrangement of their um, chest muscles being inside of their rib cage rather than above them. So if you have your chest muscle inside of your rib cage, your rib cage is going to need to expand to accommodate that enormous chest muscle. Uh, but I do think that a gliding turtle is completely reasonable and completely possible. Um, especially if you took an animal like a soft-shell turtle, um, like a Chinese pig-nosed turtle or something, that's one species that pops into my head. It's not covered in keratin scutes, it's covered in, le it's covered in leathery skin, and the sides are very flexible. Um, 
And they already use those sides, if I'm not mistaken, to help them adjust their positioning in the water. So the thing about um, evolution is that it has to work with what it's already got. Generally, once stuff gets fused together revolutionary, once a trait disappears, um, it doesn't tend to come back. Um, and when a trait evolves that mimics its purpose, it tends to evolve from different structures. When you try and evolve stuff, you should try to repurpose the existing traits of your animal to that new thing. But it does occasionally happen. I could see a turtle which is sort of leaping from tree branch to tree branch and using this big sort of stretchy membrane um, extended out from all its limbs. I think one other artist tried to do a spec evo on Gamera and it had to do with like farting. I never want to make this rocket powered kaiju that everybody beloved is just it's like a superhero in how much people adore this weird monster to just like well they fart really specifically like they fart really well <laughs> could you stylize the rockets as like bioluminescence or something or you know i thought about that often i don't want to diminish the cool factor specifically with gamera there its backstory is like it's basically like a domesticated um weapon in this fictional world at least you can keep that cool factor by saying perhaps there's hydrogen jets that um, are uh, and that are uh, that shoot off of uh, its creature as a defense weapon and as a sort of to get started spinning. But how would a giant turtle evolve spinning flight? Jet-powered locomotion for flight is also found in flying squid, so it's not so crazy an idea. Gamera can even cut through enemies with its serrated flanks. This could be a learned behavior taught to them by their owners. Ultimately, the powered flight of Gamera most likely comes from augmentations. Baby turtles have soft, bendy shells which get harder and stronger as they grow. If this is true for Gamera's ancestors, they might have rockets or some sort of propulsion system added after hatching. But let's take a more Watsonian look at why a reptile would move by rapidly rotating. It could be that spinning saves them more energy than costly flapping of wings. When an object is moving through a medium like air or water, if it spins rapidly enough, it starts to curve, bend, or drift in a certain direction. This is called the Magnus effect. I even asked my brother, who's a physics teacher, if a turtle could utilize the Magnus effect for flight, and what he said might shock you. Physics experts said, and I quote, maybe. If spinning is an ancestral trait, then it must have been an adaptation for escape while falling from a great height. Seals, walruses, and penguins are well known for jumping off of cliffs and glaciers, recklessly falling to jagged rocks below and hoping that they miss by pure luck. What if we took giant turtles and gave them a land of tall cliffs for jumping into the ocean? Giant Galapagos tortoises already make hikes up tall volcanoes. A novel way to get down quickly and avoid the sharp rocks at the bottom would be if they could somehow glide far enough away. They wouldn't need wings for this. They would need aerodynamic bodies and a preliminary spin before they leap. The Magnus effect propels objects farther the higher up they fall from. With this ancient instinct born inherently in every ancestral Gamera, the early humans who domesticated them could extrapolate it into a means of proper flight via powerful jet engine. Gamera is a weaponized, domesticated organism created by an ancient advanced civilization. And we've seen other times that this has happened in sci-fi media. Pacific Rim's Kaiju, Jurassic World's Indominus Rex and Indoraptor, The Last Guardian's Trico, Peter Jackson's King Kong, and Michael Crichton's White Apes, which all are super terrifying. There is already an ancient civilization that holds advanced knowledge that worships and keeps tortoises. This is the Dogon people. The Dogon people regard the spurred tortoise, one of the largest and most aggressive of tortoises in real life, as a mediator between men and the gods. As a result, the tortoise is often kept in villages to intercede between the head of the village, Hogon, and the ancestors. The Dogon people of Mali have known about Sirius B, a white dwarf, invisible to the naked eye, and its 50-year elliptical for hundreds of years. In their culture, the Dogon people even believe in a creation myth very similar to how we describe the Big Bang, with elements being described as particles, similar to atoms or electrons. Because of the weirdness of ancient alien theorists, maybe they've been embellished stories. There's not a lot of research on this, so I'm just gonna talk about what we do know about the biology of turtles. 
There's only a few examples from history of mankind breeding war machines and augmenting them, but the most terrifying is the Spanish battle dogs. One dog, Bruto, was surrounded by hundreds of Native Americans, but still charged at them unafraid, dragging his conquistador handler with him into the water. Despite commands to return, Bruto continued to swim toward his attackers and reached the other side of the river even while he was pierced by more than 50 arrows. How big could humans breed giant turtles? Sadly, we would need an already existing giant turtle species, one with all the physical characteristics of Gamera. Think of the ones mentioned, but also think of a lifestyle similar to the largest Calicotheres and Megatherium, reaching with its tall forelimbs to reach at the highest trees. Some researchers have even found that tortoises fed in captivity actually get bigger, faster than tortoises in the wild. There's just one problem. Is Gamera a turtle? I'd come anywhere to see a turtle. Yeah. Where'd you find him? There's no turtle, Michael. I just wanted to get you here. Oh. Placodonts convergently evolved to look just like turtles. They evolved plastrums like turtles and had teeth and beaks closest to Gamera with spikes sticking out of their shells. Placodonts also had impressive teeth used for crushing marine invertebrates. Much like Paraplacodus, the front tusks of Gamera's bottom jaw could be used for grabbing and holding its prey. But Gamera's bottom tusks are so huge that they might just be a sexual display or another sign that there are giant dangerous monsters in this world. Another placodont, Siamotus, also had triangular sections spiking from its sides and extending along its tail. Placodonts went extinct long before humans could have trained them to Beyblade around. But let's have some fun and see if we can make a realistic Gamera. In a Soviet experiment, scientists domesticated silver foxes, which quickly evolved puppy-like traits within only 15 generations. Female loggerheads reach sexual maturity on average at around 25 years old and nest every two to three years. But 80 million years ago, titanosaurs could lay 10 to 40 eggs, and much like turtles themselves, did it communally, and then left the babies to hatch and fend for themselves alone. All in all, Gamera would have to live alongside these Atlanteans for the length of multiple kingdoms before they could be tamed. High fecundity means that they are an R-selected species, and could be bred faster than animals with less offspring. When not fighting the other creation Gaios, Gamera could have been a watchdog for the Atlanteans based on its abilities, behavior, and size. Plenty of strange animals today act as alternative livestock guardians like emus, donkeys, and llamas. If the Atlanteans kept domestic crops too, Gamera's abilities could have been used against grass fires by back-burning controlled fires and absorbing ambient heat. His bravery and territoriality would make him a great defender of livestock. And just like the guardian donkeys, Gamera could have been used to transport huge amounts of goods in a single trip. The closest animals to being flammable flying fiends are the Strophorus gecko and the oil birds. Oil birds produce a waterproof oil that, when ignited, is incredibly flammable. Same with the Strophorus gecko. It shoots a sticky, foul-smelling liquid when mixed with ammonia. This chemical is incredibly combustible. Most third and fourth degree burns aren't swiftly fatal unless they are quickly cooked to death, so it's most likely going to be used as a surprising shock in defense to make predators leave it alone. It would also be limited to short bursts, or else Gamera might hyperventilate. Gamera would also have to be fed constantly so it has enough energy to produce this fuel. It might even be why they're so large. The species of bird Prosoleriforms, like the albatross, have a high calorie diet and get really big with a 12 foot wingspan and are able to shoot long jets of lethal vomit that drown their attackers. However, we can imagine it has a lower metabolic rate, similar to how some of the largest dinosaurs had equivalent metabolisms to present day mammals, weighing only a ton. But it doesn't just shoot flames from its mouth, Gamera's entire shell can absorb heat from literal flames, which seem to give it power. To explain this strange energy source, one clue might be from another of Gamera's powers, its stasis. It can turn into a stone-like statue after serious injury, seemingly coming back to life after healing. This is exactly what turtles and crocodiles do during especially cold winters, bringing down their metabolic rates and hibernating for months so they don't waste precious energy looking for food in the cold. If animals want to evolve to survive the cold, they get bigger due to Bergman's rule. What if Gamera's ancestors survived the cold by getting bigger, but now they've almost completely lost their ability to freeze and can't afford to sleep for months without food? One real life example of Gamera's heat absorption powers in nature is called kleptothermy. 
Animals beat the cold by stealing heat from other sources. There's even a modern example of a giant lizard stealing heat from a civilization of infinitely smaller organisms. Venomous goannas and termite mound geckos steal heat from ant hills and termite mounds to become more agile and energetic than their competitors and predators. Gamera's just using us for our civilization's sources of artificial heat too. But how does it magically absorb this ambient heat? The strange conductive metamaterial Gamera's shell is made of may be a product of bioaccumulation. One study found that metal actually accumulated more in turtles that were higher up in the food chain. Green turtles, Kemp's Ridley turtles, and loggerhead turtles all accumulate more aluminum, iron, nickel, silver, and dozens of other metals in their scutes. Gamera, the largest turtle, and arguably the top dog of any environment, would be the most metallic turtle on the planet. Based on its tensile strength and conductivity, Gamera's shell is probably made out of iron, aluminum, and a type of steel alloy. This could act like a living radiator that could glow red with heat. The armor would help this anemic creature stay warm and maybe even be used as a secondary defense mechanism. But just like the largest breeds of domestic dogs, these purebred turtles would be plagued with disease and shortened lifespans. Infertility, bone loss, breathing problems, and congenital disease would make it a difficult life for a domesticated animal pushed to the absolute limits of genetic engineering. This makes sense as to why we only see one left, the titular hero Gamera. Your Spec Evo videos are so poetic and meditative and cinematic. What drives you to bring these refreshing and new qualities to the Spec Evo world? I think it is just a case of loving Spec Evo and not seeing the kind of content that I want to watch on there. I think it's kind of what it comes down to other creators in other fields sometimes. Is the reason they make something is because they wanted it to exist. And one thing that I do really miss from the Walking with Dinosaur style is that they really followed a specific animal back, in, back then. I find myself a little bit more detached when I'm watching uh, something like Planet Earth where they're constantly bouncing around between different ecosystems, different animals, and it's just like scenario, 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 scenario. I don't know. It's I, I like the idea of getting attached to these animals as characters with their own sort of complex internal worlds. More people just need to hear about your world and your brain. I think so. Now I'm going to have to go online and look at turtles. Biologists would call Gamera an endling, the final specimen of a defunct species now extinct. Knowing this, I feel even more sympathy to Gamera. Maybe in the next movie, they should bring back the ancient Gameras of Atlantis and reunite the species. But what do you think? Tell me in the comments what giant creature I should draw next. And don't forget to go check out Kappa, created by the amazing Ollie, for more insane turtle creations. If you want to help keep this channel alive and help me get coffee so I can make more art, I would love it if you guys like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys around. Bye!